So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pedro Batista. I'm a PhD student and scholarship holder at the Max Planck Institute for Innovation and Competition in Munich. And now we are talking about enforcement, and I will bring you, present you a special and relative unknown problem in this area: sham litigation. Sham litigation based on copyrights, a possibility in the European Union. So, first of all, what's sham litigation? Sham litigation is a fake legal dispute. It's when a person or a company knows that he or she doesn't have any enforceable right. He knows that there is no reason to have expectation of success in a in a legal dispute or administrative dispute, yeah? And even in this case, despite of this fact, he use uh, the administrative or legal proceedings for purposes other than the success in the lawsuit. So he brings or she brings an action against a third party. How can it make sense? So um, how can it be favorable or positive for the plaintiff? We have to consider two main factors here. Here, first of all, the possibility of preliminary injunction. If this plaintiff, even if he doesn't have an enforceable right, has a good lawyer with good arguments or at least um, plausible arguments, he a, a, a preliminary injunction may be granted by the judge at the very first moment. And the second factor is high procedural costs are possible in these situations. Okay, in many legislations, in the end of the process, uh, the party who defeated in the in the legal proceedings may cover all costs but at the very first moment during the process both parties has to spend a lot of money so and what are in, in view of these two factors what are the advantages of for the plaintiff the plaintiff may through a pre preliminary injunction or through high costs delay harass or even prevent the competitor's business um, and the, maybe the competitor, the third party, the sued party, are not interested in paying a lot of money or in stopping the, his activities until the end of the process. So there is the possibility of settlement, a settlement with the plaintiff who doesn't have any enforceable right. Interesting. And in a long-term perspective, it's possible to exclude the competitors from the market or relevantly impair their business. So. Sham litigation, does it affect copyrights or IP rights? Yes. So, relation to IP rights, through sham litigation, it's possible to artificially extend the scope and the duration of the exclusive rights and also harm competition, what leads to a lower degree of efficiency on the market. Uh, on the market. So, we can imagine a situation of a software owner after the term of the protection of the, of the software, for example, he sues, despite of this fact, competitors who want to use the software in the market. And they can because the term is already over. But it's possible to get some, uh, the defendant is maybe a startup, a small sized or medium sized company, and is not interested to carry out these legal proceedings until the end. Or we can uh, think in a, in a clear case of exception of, for example, competitors making a parody of the copyright protected work. It's an exception. It's possible to do, but it gets sued. So artificially extension of the scope or duration of the copyrights. However, OK, so sham litigation is a misuse of the procedural law. It's clear. However, on the other side, we have fundamental rights in the European Union, uh, Union so right of action, right to an effective remedy, and right to a fair trial. And we cannot forget these rights, and we cannot restrict shame litigation without having objective uh, benchmarks for that. So the restriction of shame litigation is a very sensitive use. Um, by matter, uh, I would like to explain how is it in the USA, but it's a matter of time. I cannot, uh, maybe you could check exactly how the European Union court, how the general court of the EU decided a case of sham litigation in the year 1998, the case ITT Pro Media. So the, the general court decided that the requirements for sham litigation as a breach of antitrust law shall be considered in view of Article 102 of the Treaty of Functioning of the European Union. So what are the requirements? First of all, 
the plaintiff has to be an undertaking in a dominant market position. Second, the action cannot reasonably be considered as an attempt to establish its right and can therefore only serve to harass the opposite party. And the third criteria, the action is conceived in the framework of a plan whose goal is to eliminate competition. So it's competition and antitrust law. And it's not perfect. What's the problem of these requirements? Then we can check it here. So, definition of the relevant market. When we speak about copyrights or copyrights protected work, what's the relevant mark of market of a special book? Some scholars would say each book or each film is a market as such because each book has a piece of the author there and it's unique in the market. There is no substitutability with any other work. So it's not the general assumption in this area. Even the European Court of Justice have are, has already confirmed the possibility of a market, the possibility of substitutability in a specific uh, market of copyright protected works. But when we speak about films, for example, can we say that um, a novel is a substitute of a horror movie or scientific fiction or action. Um, we have another example in India. It's the famous Springer case in India. It was a market of scientific journals. So what's the relevant market when you speak about scientific journals? Only the printed journals or also the online ones? Do you have the con to consider the reputation of these uh, scientific journals? Do you have to consider only the journals in the language, in the official language of these countries, or also journals in English or in German, um, on, it's uh, it's really hard to define what's what's the relevant market, and it can be a problem to solve a shame litigation problem. Yeah. Um, second um, factor: the existence of a dominant market position. The plaintiff who makes use of the sham litigation has to be a player with dominant market position. But sham litigation is possible not only for the big players. Small-sized and medium-sized companies can also make use. They can also misuse the procedural law. So the European rule and the case law cannot solve this problem satisfyingly. And the third factor, it, it has to be a plan to eliminate competition. And here we have two problems. First of all, eliminate. Using sham litigation, making sham litigation, you can harass or you can impair the business of your competitor, of an user. Um, but to eliminate, probably it's not the rule. You, you not eliminate competition as such, only impair. And the second point, eliminate competition. Let's imagine a parody case, uh, an user, internet user making a parody of a copyrighted work, or even um, a case of a collective management society who, which doesn't have a right on, a, on an album, for example, music album, and the user downloads this album in internet and is sued by the collective management society. So the society has no rights and uh, I, I mean, it's, it's quite hard because the user in this case, he's not competing with the society on the market. He's not competing with the author. So by these three reasons, we come to the conclusion that the case law of the European Union doesn't uh, offer a, satis a satisfactory um, solution for the problem of shame litigation. And it's not surprising. Maybe the European Union doesn't have competence to, resolve, to solve a problem of misuse of the procedural law at national level. So, in the end, last slide, um, what are the possible solutions then for the problem? We have to find it at national level. Maybe doing like the USA, stricter rules in the competition law against sham litigation. Another possibly would be through a better rule of unfair competition law, but again, in this case, we are speaking about competitors, maybe the internet users against the collective society, this problem would not be solved. 
or we can make like Brazil and use a misuse doctrine, um, objectively, uh, objectively ruled in the national law, misuse in, uh, of procedural law, or we can apply a general tort law, it's the case in Germany, but it's very abstract. There is no legal certainty how the case um, how it will be decided uh, in the in the case law in the in the specific case. So <laughs> my time is over. Thank you for your attention. If you want to talk about it, uh, the topic later, we can go deep into the question. Thank you. Thank you.